In the fast-paced world we live in, how do we manage our time more effectively? Besides prioritizing, delegating, and simplifying, you may need to slow down and start connecting with those you know and love. Tools on finding life balance through personal connections, next on Living Smart. Welcome to Living Smart, the show designed to help you get the most out of life. She's a professional speaker and the author of three bestsellers. I used to have a handle on life, but it broke. Touching Tomorrow and Stop Screaming at the Microwave, How to Connect Your Disconnected Life. They all deal with her passion, helping people balance their lives. Mary Loverty has been on Oprah 2020, ABC News, sharing her blend of a balanced career and family life. She's a former faculty member of the University of Colorado School of Medicine as a director of the Hypertension Research Center and the mother of three. She's here to share how we can improve the quality of our home, work, and inner life. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. I'm just very curious, how did you become so passionate about balancing your life? Well, of course, because I was very out of balance. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was on faculty with the School of Medicine. I had a five-year-old, a three-year-old, a newborn. I took care of my 80-year-old mother-in-law. And all the ways that people were telling me to balance my life, like get up in the morning at 4 o'clock and exercise and make 50 meals on the weekend and do two things at once and go faster. And I'm thinking, I'm going to be six feet under here pretty fast. Right, right, right. So because I knew medical research, I took what I knew and I applied those principles to how do we really keep our lives in balance. It was a survival technique for me. Right. And you had a, you, you, your approach is very different about balancing your life. And, and you talk about connectedness, and, and, and that is more important than delegating, prioritizing, writing lists. And I think I'd love to know how you came up with that concept. Well, I looked at people who were in balance. And they weren't getting any more or less done than anybody else. They didn't. They still had to-do lists. They prioritized. They delegated. They simplified. But the most important thing that they did was that they asked a different question. They looked at it from three words. Connection creates balance. And as a scientist, I went back and looked. You know, I have to figure everything out. Where our pain comes from is being disconnected from what is really important to us. So the solution, the only known solution to disconnection is connection. So instead of saying, how am I going to get it all done, which isn't going to happen, the new question is, with whom should I connect? And what is the new motto? To stay when you can't keep up, connect. Um, and it can be any answer. You know, there's always this push-pull between is it work, is it family, is it kids, is it health, is it... And that's why prioritizing doesn't really work that well, because it's all important. Right. You have to go to work to pay for the house so your kid has a place, but if you don't go to the gym and exercise, you're going to die, and you don't get to take the kid, <laughs> and you lose your house. So <laughs> explain how prioritizing helps. Right, right, But if you look right. at your life at any given moment and say, where am I disconnected? It might be sleep. You know, you got a long to-do list, but you're crazy. Go to bed, and in the morning, it will all seem sane again, and you can handle it. Right. Sometimes it will be your child. You need to say, I need to go to the school play. And sometimes you need to sit down with your family and say, look, I have a big project coming up for the next six weeks. I'm not going to be here as much as I want to be. Let's figure out how to stay connected, because my focus is going to be over here. Right, right, right. Now, where do we begin? Because we're talking connectedness, but we need to know to what. Where do we begin? Well, first of all, you have to give yourself permission to understand one thing. You're not ever, 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 ever going to get it all done again. If that's your goal, you're in big <laughs> you're trouble. You're God and you're not God. Exactly. The other thing is, is we have to really understand what life balance is, and it's feeling good. You mm. know, we try to make ourselves as miserable as we can possibly make ourselves in the guise of, I'm going to keep my life in balance. So we don't sleep, we don't eat, we bark at people, we don't make love. I mean, it's the long list of, I'm not going to do all these great things, and right. then I'll be in balance somehow. Right, right, right. It's the antithesis of that. So if you want to know if you're in balance, you feel good, and that's as close as that's, we get. That's, yeah. Okay, let's talk about the connection solution. Uh, there are four questions here. One is, what should I do? And we ask that as one of the first things. A situation comes up and we say, what should I do? And there plays the tape of, you know, our church and our temple and our parents and our guilt and our everything. Grandma. <laughs> exactly. And our kids going, Mom. That's not 
a very effective question. Question number two then is, what do I want to do? Right, and a lot of times it's take a nap. It's <laughs> <laughs> run I'll away to the circus. Um, you do have to look at what you want to do, and it will guide you then. Um, and I think knowing what you want to do is an important acknowledgement. Right, right. What do I need to do? Well, and that's what drives most of us. It's urgency. It's the emergency room kind of mentality to life. What do I need to do right now? <laughs> right. Who should I connect with? Who should I, that, that's the big question. Who should that's I connect with? That's the big with? question. With whom should I connect? If you believe the premise that things aren't going well, I don't feel good, I'm not meeting the needs that I want because I'm disconnected somewhere, then the question is, with whom should I connect? Mm -hmm. And then when you get that answer, after you've kind of gone through the steps and you get the answer of, this is whom I should connect with, then go with that. Forgive yourself. Don't make a list of all the other things you didn't get done. Right, right. Be, One be at, at a peace, time. Be at peace with your decision. Yes. Um, you, you talk about also the importance of being connected with your elders. Why is that? Well, it's a circle of life, for starters. And we intuitively know that what shaped their lives shaped ours. So keeping that connection will um, help us. I, I have a book called Touching Tomorrow, and it's how to interview your elders in a review mm. of their life. Wonderful. And uh, one gentleman said that actually his father had passed, and he wasn't able to tape and ask the questions. So I always suggest, well, get the people who knew them and ask them the questions about this person. And he called me one night and he said, listen, I won't keep you, but I want to tell you something. Um, it explains a lot. And I feel better. Right, right. So you learn about yourself and how to keep your own self in balance by understanding about the elders. Let's talk about uh, improving romantic relationships. This is a big <laughs> one. Everybody wants to have a great romance. And, and how do you do that to stay in balance? Well, first of all, I want people to look at the sense of romance in an entirely different way. Um, it is the sense of romance in the big. Not everybody has a partner. Not, and the ones that do, they're not all great relationships yeah. or good relationships. Some are strained. Some of us don't have any. But the point is, most of us could do better. And if we did, our lives would be so much more in balance. So looking at the sense of romance, it could be language, art, literature, a beautiful sunset, a glass of wine with a piece of chocolate, you know, golf course God, on Sunday morning. You're giving me great morning. ideas. <laughs> I want to go get some wine right now, okay. <laughs> but the point is, is that it's not supposed to be our legacy when we die, that we have a stack of to-do lists to the ceiling with everything crossed off. Right. We're supposed to have a little bit of the sense of romance in there. Right. And it doesn't have to be just with another person. Let's talk about the barrier, the biggest barrier to life balance. What is that? Is it our own thought patterns? <laughs> Well, I think the biggest barrier is that we have the wrong definition for it. We think that it's when it's, your life is like this, right? or we think it's we have to get it all done. I love to-do lists, right? but you won't find life balance on your to-do list. Why is that? Because it's not about doing things. It's how you feel. It's how you feel. It's not, and, and the thing is, it's futile. You will not get it done. You know, it's like why I love time management, but it's not a solution to life balance because no matter what I do, I always have, you know, I get, get one thing done and I have three hours of demands competing for right. that time that I saved. This is a very interesting question for people our age. Social media, which was not existent <laughs> when we were growing up. Right. Does it hurt us or does it help us stay connected? Do you yes. Think? <laughs> yes to both, right? Yes, yes to both, yes. because there's no really yes. yeah, right or wrong answer. I went to lunch with one of my friends, and Scott and I were sitting there, and we looked over, and there were two 20-year-olds, 20 20-ish, 20 um, having lunch, and they were they never looked up. They texted the entire time. They never. I thought, why did you go out to lunch? <laughs> and they were texting each other. I don't know who they were texting, but it wasn't. <laughs> that can't be. That can't be great. No, of course right? that's the uh, bad example of. You know, our life cannot be like this and right. think that. So it's a, it's, it also, it's a balance. It's a, ba it's a, it's balance. a balance. And on the other hand, when you get a new grandchild like I did, then you get to, you know, put that on your Facebook and share it. So it's like everything else. It's how you use it. You know, the, the last generation, you remember when um, long-distance calls yes. cost a fortune? Yes, and people and you would, had to wait for them. Yes, and people would say, hurry up, hurry up, it's long-distance. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. I'm aging myself, but, 
But every, what, yeah. every generation, when the new technology comes, we're sure that it's going to ruin all of us. And somehow we find an equilibrium where it'll be good. I think you stay more connected with more people, but it's more superficial because, because you know so many more people and you're in touch with so yes. many more people that you can't really get into in-depth relationships this way. It, it's not um, a substitute for sitting in front of the fire and curling up. Yeah, with somebody, right, you right. Know, or, really or, or having intimate moments. Yes. Um, you were the head of the uh, hypertension center. I'm always just curious what you learned about what makes people's blood boil. <laughs> well, research shows that it's when we feel out of control. Okay. And yet the paradox to this is that you're not ever going to get control. The solution is not to get control. The solution is to understand that you don't need control. Right, right, and uh, that's the thing. How do you take time to pause? Lots of ways. Uh, one of them is that I ballroom dance. Oh, I thought you played basketball. Well, I do play. I do. Pl <laughs> I played basketball for many, many years on a men's league. Right. But th what happened was that was I, smart of you. Yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> I, I want to do that too. <laughs> okay. The, the thing that happened, and I don't know exactly how it happened, is that these men got younger <laughs> and taller and faster, <laughs> and I could no longer keep up. Plus, I liked my teeth, one for each spot, and their elbows were right there. <laughs> so that what I loved about basketball was the beauty and the grace and the fun and how it took me totally out of my I, element. I never thought about anything but basketball. All my problems, issues, concerns went away when I was playing. Okay. And that's what ballroom dance does for me right now. Um, I am whisked away into another world. I know, it's, it's really, and it's great to lose weight, isn't it? It's great for everything. Connecting with new kids on the block, let's talk about that. Okay. Uh, and it's, it's about relationship with your kids, and mm -hmm. we'll talk about the different kinds of connections. Tell me, tell me what you can share with us about that. Well, our children need to know who they belong to. They don't need perfect parents. They don't need parents who are there all the time. They don't need us to solve all their problems. The, the purpose of the family is to tell us who we belong to. And so just about everything about life balance, when we talk about rituals, we talk about personal policies, we talk about vacations or who we are, it all goes back to this sense of belonging. Families have quirky little things. Um, and, you know, we say, oh, no, 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 but really we do. And it's what defines us. Mm -hmm. I have five brothers, and we had in the hall a big light overhead and a little light upstairs with all the bedrooms around it. Depending how old you were and how scared you were of the dark, every night we'd yell, shut off the big light. <laughs> no, turn on the little light. <laughs> we went home 40 years later, and we're all still all grown and still shouting that. But you know what? If you're in a house and you're yelling, turn off the big light or the little light, there's a very good chance you're related to me. It right, tells right. us who we belong to, and right. every family has those. Yeah, that's very true. For us, I think it's eating at the table. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Connecting with yourself. Mm -hmm. What are the, some of the things you talk about in my corrections? I found that very, very interesting because right. it takes so much of the pressure away from, you have to exercise one hour a day, or you have to eat this, or, you know. Right. We are a quirky species. We hurt <laughs> humans, and we resist things that are good for us. And if I knew that, I would be a multi, multi, multi-millionaire. I did find, however, a way around it. If we can get around the resistance that we have by using what I call a micro-action, it's a step so small you don't resist it. It's teeny, teeny, tiny. So, for example, one um, man said he wanted to floss. His dentist told him he had to floss, and he just resisted it. He wouldn't do it. And so I'm like, you know, it's not expensive. It doesn't <laughs> hurt. It doesn't take very long. Why do we resist this? We all do, don't right, we? Right. And, um, I said, okay, the micro-action is this. You take out a piece of floss every day and you just lay it there. You do not have to floss. You just lay the floss there. He said, you know, after about two weeks, every day taking it out, I felt so <laughs> stupid. <laughs> but pretty soon I pick it up. <laughs> so many of those have happened. I wrote three books by, and talk about resistance, but every morning I'd get up, I'd turn the computer on. That was the first micro-action. The second micro-action is I'd go over and I'd type the word the. Well, the looks so stupid on the thing. So I would write a sentence. Well, a sentence is almost a paragraph. I put one more, pretty soon I'm in the flow. So psychologists tell me that it's like putting your toe in the river with no intention of actually swimming. You're just checking the water. Mm -hmm. And pretty soon you realize, oh, it's actually not that cold. And then you put it a little longer. And then the flow of the river just takes you. And I like what you said about um, losing weight because I think that was very important. You, t you tell your, your clients, look, 
you don't have to go exercise an hour a day or even 20 minutes. Yeah. Just just walk for five minutes, and what happens? Well, even better than that, when I was with the university and I was uh, testing a new drug to treat obesity, this uh, patient, um, they had to take the drug, go on a diet, and exercise. And this woman would rather eat a strict diet of earthworms than you know, exercise. So I said, well, in order to stay in the study, you need to. So um, she couldn't. So I said, here's what I want you to do. I just want you to get dressed every day. Go home from work, go right into your bedroom, change your clothes, put your exercise clothes on, and you're done. And I said, you don't have to exercise. She said, well, you know, that's not going to help, Mary. And I said, just humor me. She comes back a week later, and I said, did you get dressed? She said, yes, I did. I said, so next week I want you to walk for one minute. And she went, I said, come on, you won't walk for one minute? She said, I walk for 20 minutes three times this week. I said, what happened? She said, I felt so stupid standing there all dressed up with no place to go <laughs> that I went outside. She said, you know, I ran into my neighbor, and now we walk together, and between the verbal venting and the hiking, I feel terrific. Right. As ridiculous as it sounds, it was the micro action of saying, I'm just going to put my clothes on. Right. It, 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 it's writing is for writers. That's that's huge. You just start writing. I remember when I can't write this paper. You just start writing, and just somehow it just starts to flow. And it, it sounds yeah. like it's the same the yeah. same concept. Uh, another way to connect with yourself is to tap into your passion. And you yes. told us about uh, ball dancing, ball, ballroom right? dancing, basketball. And here's one of the other myths about life balance: is we think we're supposed to give those things up, and then our lives will be in balance. And actually, it's exactly the opposite. You know, I tell people that I know some of what's coming down the pike at them. They're very busy, maybe they're unemployed, they're looking for jobs, they're stressed, all of this. And they'll say, you know, I can barely keep my head above water. I don't have time to tap into my passion. And I say to them, that's the opposite. You don't have the luxury of not tapping into pa your passion because it's going to require all the zest for life that you can muster in order to meet those demands. So put that in there. Do you think it's difficult, though, for some people to find their passion, though? Yes, I think it's difficult for all of us, and it's one of the reasons why I think you should meditate, you should pray, mm -hmm. you should mm -hmm. exercise. You know, why do you get your best ideas in the shower right. when you have no place to write it down? With It's because you are... Not stressed out. Not stressed out. Right. You're away from that. So right. um, what I love about your show is that you give people the opportunity to answer these questions. They may not have said today before they watch this, I wonder what I'm passionate about. <laughs> but now they will. I now they will so. ask the question. Um, another connecting is very important, connecting with your family. Mm -hmm. um, and you, you mentioned marriage and romance first. Well, it is the foundation. And, of course, mm -hmm. we define partnerships and being a spouse and all that in all the varied ways that it can be. Um, you want to ask yourself, how much attention am I giving that? You know, mm -hmm. one of the concepts I have is called a short list. And the short list is this. If, there, if you called someone in the middle of the night and you needed some money, for example, and it's a big amount of money, and whether that's $5 or $50 or $5,000 or $50,000, it doesn't matter, but think of a big amount, and you couldn't tell them what you needed it for, and you needed it right away, and you couldn't tell them when you were going to pay it back, who could you call? Right. Well, for most of us, it's a short list. That's right. That's and right. yet... When you look at that short list, how much of your time and love and energy are being poured into them as opposed to all these extraneous things that you're trying to kind of put out the fire on? Right, right. So pay attention to your short list. Let's talk about connecting with the new kids on the block. What does okay. that mean? Well, every generation has a new entity that come up these strange creatures called our children. <laughs> Very strange. And you know, some generations have drug sex and rock and roll, and some of them have Elvis, and no, some of them have, you know, computers and the internet, and we have new rules about, you know, you have to give me your cell phone before you go to bed. I mean, that wasn't something many people lived with. So I call it the new kids on the block because we really do have to look at how are they getting their needs met? How is their social, um, you know, life and, and try to connect with them. And you have something really beautiful, I thought. Uh, the family that grace together stays together. Yes, I really, really believe in trying to model respect for your elders. Uh, when my kids were middle schoolers, um, I had to drive them around all summer. And so I said to them, okay, I will drive you wherever you need to go. And how you get to pay for the gas is go visit your nana 
in the, she lived in assistant living. One hour a week, I'll drive you over there, and you sit with her and learn from her. Well, the first day I took Emily there, you know, she's rolling her eyes. What am I supposed to talk about, Mom? I said, ask her about the china in her china cabinet. Wow. So she gets there. She, I wait there for an hour. She comes back, and I said, so did you, how did it go? She said, it went really well. I said, did you ask her about her china? She said, yes. It was an hour answer. <laughs> <laughs> you knew what she was going to talk about, didn't you? <laughs> but the point was, there was the plate from France that her husband brought back from the war. And mm, there great was story. The, her, her whole china cabinet is a story of her life. Emily gained, she gained, and that, you know, keeps and us all together. And over time, the conversation got more interesting, I'm sure, for your of daughter. Of course, of course. And then Emily opened up and told Nana things. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 you have to, it's, like, it's starting. It's starting. Rituals are very important to stay connected. Mm -hmm. Tell me. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I don't know about you, but my day starts in the morning very early, and then it goes, whoosh. <laughs> it disappears. It disappears. <laughs> And so do the weeks, and so do the months, and after a while, <laughs> right, so do the right, years. Right. So rituals, meaningful rituals, give our lives some predictability and some stability at a time when I don't think I have to explain to your viewers that there is not very much predictability or stability going around. Can you give me examples of rituals? So Absolutely. When my kids were little, um, Sarah and I used to sit down every morning before she went to school for five minutes, and we'd read the comics together. Mm. I'd have tea, she'd have some hot chocolate, we'd cut some out, we'd send them back and forth. Year after year after year, we would sit down and read the comics. Well, she's 30 years old now. And when there comes a time when we need to talk about something, you know what? We know how. Right. We had a little ritual where we did it for years. Think about your grandparents. Talk about the family that grazed together. My grandfather used to give us Tootsie Rolls every time we'd go. And when my daughter um, told me she was pregnant, she said, I want to give you a bag of Tootsie Rolls. Right, the so generations. The generations, you know, those from kinds of rituals go along. You have them yourself. <laughs> if you have pets, they keep you into rituals. You don't have to wonder if they want to go for a walk. They're not going to, you know, say, I don't worry about that ritual today. Right, right. They're so they do give us some predictability and stability. You also bring up policies. Policies are one of my favorites because policies are based on what we value. And you know, there's lots of policies, insurance policies, return right. policies. And what it is, if you look it up in the dictionary, is wisdom in management. So instead of trying to renegotiate with your family or whatever each time the issue comes up, you establish a policy. And families have them, and I hope your um, uh, listeners and, and viewers will think about theirs. You have policies about money. There's probably a number at which you have to discuss with each other before you spend it, an amount. Right, right. It could be $10, it could be $1,000, doesn't matter. Um, people have policies about the laundry, division of labor. Um, nobody moves until everybody's buckled up. We had a policy in our family that because my kids were open enrolled to a school in which we had to drive them, when they got old enough to have a car, we got them a car, we paid for their insurance, we bought their gas, and here was the policy. You may not drink and drive. Not, we're not talking drunk. Just have anything to drink. Mm. And if you do, the policy is in the morning, the car is sold. There's no explanations. There's no circumstances. Because I'm not going to pay for that. Did you ever have to do it? No, and here's how I found out, too. I, I enforced it. When they came home, I would have the alarm set for their curfew because I didn't want to stay up that late. So their job was to come in and turn the alarm off and then kiss me goodnight. And when they kissed me goodnight, I went. Yeah, yeah, you won. You won. <laughs> what, what do you think are the three most important things that we need to remember? From First what of we all, talked about? connection creates balance. Okay. Um, secondly, look at your life and think about how you're going to stay connected to what's really important. It might be a policy. It might be a micro action. It might be a ritual. It might be tapping into your passion. Keep asking yourself, with whom should I connect? And third, and I think really most importantly, give yourself credit for all the good you do. You know, we we race around, we do amazing things, we fall into bed, and what do we do? We think of the three things we didn't get done or do perfectly. <laughs> you really are doing a good job. You really do make a difference. You have enormous connections in your life, personally, professionally, in your community, spiritually. Give yourself credit for those. It's like you really have to focus on the positive. How do you know that you're living smart? I feel good. You feel Ser good. Tell me why you feel it. good. 
Well, I know that my connections are intact. I know that when they get disconnected, I can ask a good question. And that if I stay as connected as I can to all the things that are really important to me, I can tell because I feel good. I'm not tired. I'm not stressed. I'm not angry. I'm eager. I'm excited. I'm ready to go. And then when the cycle turns again and I get out of balance, I know what to do. Do you feel people respond to, to this connection idea well? They do. They really do. Men do. Women do. It doesn't matter if you're, what your age is. If you're married, single, widowed, divorced, um, when you can't keep up, connect. It's like a light bulb that came on. Because there are many ways to, to, to really have balance in your life, but this one is very interesting because it focuses on, on what's important in life, which yeah. is your relationships to yourself, to others, and to your family. And so uh, to learn more about balancing your life, go to our website. There you'll find a complete resource list. You can also email us or call us with your comments at 713-743-8513. And that's our show for today. I hope you've enjoyed it. Remember to live smart. I'm Patricia Gross. Have a balanced week. For a transcript of this program, send 695 to the address on your screen. Please include the name of the guest.